So let us now talk about the graphical derivation of uh, VMPL equals to W condition. So we derived this yesterday, right? In the last class, we have derived this, right? VMP equals to W condition. Now let's try to, let us try to put this graphically. Okay, so what is your profit function? What is your profit revenue minus cost? We have assumed that input two is fixed in the short run. In the short run, right? So can I write it like this? PY equals to pi minus w1 x1 minus w2 x2 bar. And from here, I can get the value for y, which is pi by p. Uh, which is uh, pi by p, and this is plus. I'm so sorry. Da, da, da. Right. Sorry. W1 by p x1 plus W2 by p x bar 2. I can write it like this. Right? Okay. Now, these are called the ISO profit line. above is called the ISO profit line. Now, what do you mean by the ISO profit line? That different combinations of X1 and X2 are going to give you the same level of profits. That is what is meant by the ISO profit line. Well, although, I mean, we can also draw it, draw the ISO profit line for the varying combinations of X2 as well. But since we're talking about X2, which is fixed in the short run, our life has become a little simpler. How? I'll just tell you. So let me just define this. Isoprofit line are the combination of uh, they are the combination of input good and output good that give the constant level of profit. So wherever in economics, I mean, they are using the word ISO. That means a constant. So we have seen ISO cost line. We've seen ISO profit lines. So it's like this, right? So if you look at it, so if I just, if I'm just going to draw this for So you have uh, output one here, which is a varying output variable out sorry, input one here, which is the va variable input. And you have the output here. We have the output here, right? Now, just think about it. Your, can I just write this here? Y is equal to pi by P plus W2 by P X bar plus W1 by P X like this, fair enough. Now, if you look at it carefully, this guy is the interceptor. Right? 
right? And uh, this is the slope of this line, slope. This is just a straight line, right? This is just the slope of the line, right? So you get this kind of the curve. You get this kind of the curve. So this has, this is the intercept, this intercept. So if x1 is zero, y is equal to this much, this much the level of output, right? And this I can write as x2. And the slope of this line is w1 by t. Fair enough. Okay. Now, what will happen is that uh, in case if maybe your w2 is going to increase, or pi is going to increase, this intercept is going to increase, and this line will shift upwards or downwards depending on whether it is increasing or decreasing whether profit is increasing or w2 is increasing or price is decreasing whatever but it will when the price in w1 is going to change then this will also change the slope of the line right so this is what my iso profit line is i think later on in the course we will also do uh, the iso profit lines while we are going to talk about the Kurno equilibrium and the Stackelberg equilibrium again. So we'll be talking about that thing there. Fair enough. So, and this guy is, uh, is uh, the production function which I have. This is the production function, let's say. So you have the production function like this. This is what my production function is. Y is equal to function of inputs. This is what my production function is. So at that point, the point of tangency, uh, this point, the point of tangency between the ISO profit line and the production function is the point of an equilibrium. The point of tangency between the ISO profit line and the production function is <clears throat> the point of an equilibrium, right? So please write this. So what is the, where the slope of the production function and the slope of the ISO profit line is going to be equal, right? Okay. The slope of the ISO profit line is what? W1 by P. Slope of the production function is what? MPL or MPX1. Uh, so he's right. At the point of tangency, at the point of tangency, right. slope of production function is equal to the slope of isoprofit line. Anji Vita, so production function slope is what? Del Y by del X1. That is what? Marginal productivity of input X1. Slope of ISO profit line is what? We have just seen W1 by P. So if you just write it, so this could be written as what? P into MPX1 is equal to W1. P into MPX1 is equal to W1. Right. Okay. Now let's look at few very simple comparative statics, right? That is how the optimal is going to change when some exogenous parameter is going to change. That is called comparative statics. 
right? How the optimal is going to change when some exogenous parameter is going to change. So, W1 increases. W1 increases. That's the first case. So you have what? You have production function with you, right? And you have the initial, let's say isoprofit curve like this. And this is the point of tangency, which you have. So you have input one, you have the output, and this is the point of tangency. So this is giving you the, the optimal value of input optimal value of input one. So X one star should be employed. Uh, so this has the slope W1 by B, right? Okay. Now what happens? Supposedly W1 is increasing. So the slope is going to become steeper. So when the slope is going to become steeper, it will look like this. So the tangency of the production function and the isoprofit line will occur here. So new slope is what W1 dash by P. X1 double star. So what has happened is with an increase in W1, the optimal amount of input one has decreased and that, that is reasonable also. So if uh, the input one is becoming expensive, you should be uh, consuming less of that. You should be uh, employing less of that. So that's an idea, right? So that's an idea. So it means what? The optimal level, so you might just uh, write this also. The optimal level of factor one optimal level of factor one falls, right? So what has happened is, this also means this, that as the price of the input one is increasing, the demand for input one must fall. It means, as the price of, input one increases, demand for input one must fall. So it means what? That factor demand curve is downward sloping. That factor demand curve is downward sloping, right? I mean, for example, you have uh, you have the employment of input one on the x-axis. You have rise of input one on the on the y-axis. So when rise of input one was lower, you were employing more. When price of input one increases, you employ less. So the demand for factor one is down. So factor demand curve is down. Second case. Output price decreases. Second case, output price decreases. Now what happens in case of the output price is going to decrease? Just think about it. So 
So you have the input. Sorry, you have the production function. You have the initial, what do you call, isoprofit, initial isoprofit, slope is W1 by P. This is the initial equilibrium level. And you employ how much? X1 star. Okay. Now, supposedly, if the output price is going to fall, so when output price is going to fall, your P denominator is going to fall. That would mean the slope is going to increase. So, this is the new slope. W1 by P dash. This is X1 double star. It is going to fall. Think about it. When the output price has fallen, now the, the of course, when to produce a given level of output, your profits are falling. So you're losing incense, incentive to produce more. So you'll be employing even lesser. No? So the isoprofit line is going to fall. Um, so when the output price is falling, the supply of output is also falling. So when the supply of output is falling, actually you're, you'll be employing even less labor, right? Less labor or less input one, whatever. So when the new isoprofit curve, it has become steeper the optimal choice has decreased. So if the amount of, please write. If the amount of factor one decreases and the level of Factor two is constant in the short run. Factor two is fixed in the short run. You cannot increase or decrease the supply of that factor or the demand for that factor. That is fixed. That is that cannot change. So if that factor is not changing and you're using less of the input of factor one, your supply is going to fall, right? So then supply of output. Supply of output must fall, right? So, and of course, I mean, you can also think it like this, a fall in the price, of output reduces supply. It's a simple thing. So this means what? The relation between the price of the output and the supply of the output is, is positive. So when the price of the output is falling, supply of the output is, is uh, falling. So that relation between the two is positive. So that would mean that uh, the supply function must slope up upwards because that relation is positive. So the price of the output is going to increase in that way. So in that case, uh, the supply of the output will also increase in the supply function. My slope upwards, right? So this is what I wanted to do in this recording. Thank you, Rita.